Hello, this is Matt from Gemini Softworks and JetForceGeminiApex.com and I am continuing off on this tutorial exactly where I left off. Please watch them in order if you want them to make sense. Alright, I'm going to go back to events up here, our event editor. I'm going to click player, right click colli collisions with another overlapping another object and click active, which will be our yellow square. <coughs> And when that happens, let's say we destroy our player, and then we will, well, we don't need to ignore player control since it's not having, nothing's doing anything, and let's just uh, click and drag this event. Clicking and dragging will copy things to the same type of object. So this is a string. If I had another string, I can copy this over to that. So basically it makes it easy to copy events. You could also highlight something and go copy paste but clicking and dragging is a lot easier. That will make it display paragraph 2 and set the color to red so we'll lose and we'll test that out right now. Okay so it's going up and down, up and down. Oh no I'm a loser. Okay. So what if we want to give the player another chance? How would we do that? Well, um, really simple. Let's create something so that there's a bit of a delay, a visible delay, like a counter. Something that'll count down until, uh, you know, between the player dying and the player starting again. So we'll create a counter object over here. Then we'll go to its properties and we will set the type to text. Since text makes it just easier, we can set the font and everything. We'll go ahead and make it real big, bold and italic to be bold and italic. And we'll have to change the size a bit to... Jeez, you have to make this thing huge for it to show up. Uh, I guess it doesn't like italics too much, but okay, we'll just set that over here to the middle. We don't even need that much of a range, so we'll drag this down to over here. It's not perfect, but it'll do. Uh, over here. Okay. And that's set up. Black will be fine. Alright. So we'll go back to our event editor, and we'll go back to our starter frame. I'm going to put this at the beginning since it's at the very start. And we will make this visible the visibility of this object invisible since we don't want it showing up obviously. And I'm gonna do something a bit more complicated than I intended to, but it's a good thing to know about it. Over by new condition over here, if we right click the number, we can go insert a group of events. Now what is a group of events? It's a set of events that will help you keep things organized and it also works a bit like a function in programming if you set it up properly. Not quite as efficient as that, but I'll show you how it works here. We'll call this group of events the timer, and it is not active when the frame starts, so uncheck that. Then in our timer properties, we will go, um, go ahead and say, we'll right click the, uh, the special, we'll go group of events, on group activation. Now on this group activation, we'll go down to the counter over here on this event, we'll right click, we'll go set counter to, I don't know, let's say three seconds. So set counter to three. And then we'll go over here to um, compare a counter value is greater than zero then insert, and then go with the time event, and go every one second. Now, it might work, not work out the best, but that's okay. Now, for this event, we go subtract from counter, subtract one. And then we will create another event. It's counter compared value, compared the counter to a value of zero. And then we want something else to happen. We need to set that up. Alright, first 
we will just say if the player leaves, leaves the area and yeah, for these two events right click and go group of events activate the timer event we'll drag this down so it will happen for both of those things then when the counter equals zero we will have this um, we will have this make the text invisible we'll make the counter invisible and then we will create an object which will be the player object we can have it created right over here let's see if you want to be really exact you go 60 by 352 by 354. I think that's exactly where the player starts out. Then I'll create a new player here. Now this again is not the method I would use uh, if I was making a more complicated game, but this will do. So let's test this out. We'll play it, we'll just block right off and say loser. Okay, nothing showing up. It's because I forgot to do something. Alt editor. What? The? Okay, forget that. <coughs> um, forgot to make this visible. <laughs> so on group act activation, we obviously want to make our counter visible again. And another thing we have to change here is if the player wins, we need to make sure that our text, the paragraph, is on winner. And we also need to set the color for our text back to the victory color of green. Uh, is that going to be right? Oh, this. The frame palette will be the easiest way to set this. Okay, so that's set properly. Now this all should work. Alright, so if I walk off, loser, counts down, one, resets you. Oh! <laughs> silly me, that's why it stopped working. Alright, see this event right here where it says create? It's not going to stop doing this since this is uh, this is always true, right? Well, it's not always true, but so long as the counter equals zero, this is going to create a uh, a player object. And since this only subtracts from the counter if it's greater than zero, this is going to be true for a while. So we want to deactivate this event when the counter equals zero. So we'll go group of events, deactivate the timer. Okay, so this should work now. So now if I leave the frame, it'll say loser and then restart. And then if I go here, loser, restart, you can jump again and then go winner. Huh, why did that happen? Why did it happen if I chose to win? This reappears, this destroyed, ignore control. Player leaves play area. Oh, this is why it happens. Okay, I'm fairly sure this is why. It's activating the group timer when player leaves the area. No, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense either. I'm going to have to figure this out for a sec. Alright, I figured it out. And I'm fairly sure it has to do with this here. When the player leaves the play area, we want to make sure we destroy the player, since if we don't, then we might have multiple players doing weird things. That's no good. And just to be sure here, under our timer group of events, we will right click and insert. Under special, we have limit conditions, and we will, we will select only one action when event loops. So. That means every time this event happens, it'll only do it once, rather than being constantly true. We'll go for a quick, quick, quick test here. Okay, this makes us a loser, and we will jump and be a winner. Alright, good. That's good for now, I think, and I will continue this in the next tutorial real soon.